welcome to the class lecture today we'll go for another important topic that is the transaction process processing monitors so basically what is transaction processing uh, whenever a record is being inserted in a computer when a typically operation is done in a database that is uh, basically a transaction a transaction processing uh, initially developed as a multi-thread server to support large number of terminals from a single process. That is mean in the same time you can do a lot of transaction in a single processor but they are maintained some serial by which they are doing the operation throughout the computer system with some internal parts of the computer. Provide infrastructure to building and administrating the complex transaction processing system with a large number of clients and multiple servers. Suppose like a bank, in there there are uh, millions of customers and there they might have uh, a lot of servers. But which client is connected to which server in how he is doing the transaction, that is one of the things. Suppose like a, a customer having some uh, bank account in his ac in in any of the bank and he is doing some online transaction by the same time he is giving uh, some uh, he is doing some payment uh, for some to buy some product in the same time it is shows that he has not available credit but in the same time the salary will insert it in his account then he can do the transaction as he wish so the transaction are need to be serialized with some specific criteria but the number of servers are fixed so some servers are connected and these servers are connected and updated infrequently so the responses are depends on the server speed and technology and routing the client message to the servers so for the routing time it requires some times and coordination to of the two phase commit of transaction access multiple servers so this is basically the transaction producer uh, monitors this basically monitoring the transaction processing over the internet with some uh, connectivity of different servers of different accounts so there are different uh, architecture of transaction monitor monitor so past architecture is process per client model there are you show here there are remote clients a lot of clients is here in these clients so uh, in this client what is happening here there are a number of uh, remote clients each of the clients is connected with a single server so each of the clients if connected through the, a single server then what is happening here the files are uh, in different locations so each of the servers is connected with the files and it is a costly solution in this respect that the clients every clients need a server connection it is one to one connection so that is it requires uh, memory requirements are too high and it is the multitasking CPU and these are the multitasking CPUs are connected with different files location and working to the client so these clients uh, it is uh, not a good rational model for the uh, larger volume of transaction and single process model all remote terminals connected with a single process server so there are a lot of users remote client is here so user are connected to a server but in this server there might be multiple threads or multiple processors so what is multiple thread basically means the multiple thread means a processor may have a different uh, a lot of threads that it are uh, these are uh, preserved with the thread pools but that basically this is a uh, operating system uh, operating system concept here um, how if the uh, threadings are doing well in the processor system so these can be um, uh, happen a cheaper uh, and lower cost of transaction switching so thread switching uh, when a, a work is assigned to a computer suppose you have um, if you go to your computer system and go to the task manager so you can show the show a lot of process is doing at the same time and each of the process having some number with some ram allocation so this is basically some thread so one thread is working for a job assigned to a job and it is working for that and another uh, process is working for another thread so this is how the application is maintaining between to protection of these tasks and each of the tasks if you are think this is a transaction so total system is working like that so uh, we can see that 
uh, it, the another structure is many server single router model so that is basically clients are connected to some routers and these are the different servers and these are the different files so basically the uh, clients are connected to a servers and router and router take the decision of which server it will send the um, request so it is basically a, uh, we can say in the technical term if you uh, it is uh, uh, it having a technical term that is called the load uh, load sharing so load sharing uh, is loss distributor it is also said so load sharing what is happening here there are multiple requests are coming rpc that is remote procedure calls so rpc is coming here and clients are thinking that all the works are happening for him but it is not basically it depends in uh, it's basically maintain the queue and it passes the calls to different servers which is allocated the free so suppose like uh, in when the result is coming for the ssc or hsc uh, in the education board a lot of people are hit in the same server so there is a load sharing server it might having some um uh, it might having some capacity of one lakh hit per minute so if there it crosses one lakh more than one lakh hit a minute then some uh, user may uh, seen that the server is busy but about the one lakh hits there are not one lakh servers there might be four or five servers but these servers may have multi, uh, thousands of threads so what is happening here these all the one lakh uh, or more than one lakh of uh, users are hit in the servers and these load sharing is this load uh, sharing is shared the load to different multiple servers which maintain some keys and it having some of the files of the result and then it returns the result to the server and process and then it returns to the user but user thinks that there is a single server but but the thing is not because it is maintain a queue of thousands of threads in a uh, in another router system so another the it is a frequently model of the uh, geographically uh, location uh, sub location based system that is the many server and many router model so basically monitors are setting here so it uh, focused on users are connected to some routers and these routers are connected to the different servers suppose like you are these these uh, peoples are from uh, Europe and these peoples are from Asia so Asian peoples are connected to uh, routers and European peoples are connected to another router but these all routers are connected to some fixed servers so suppose like these are the files of Amazon system or it is the file system of the shops of AliExpress so Alibaba so Alibaba may have different servers but the people in Asia or in the people of Europe are multiply connected with different servers but they doesn't know in how they are basically working so basically whenever you are connected to amazon or you whenever you connected to alibaba so you may think that you are connected to a server but you don't know in between if there are multiple routers or hubs which is connected with the different servers and give you the data of different products so that is basically a transaction network so uh, it is a huge structure but in, in our case uh, we are just seeing that uh, we can th think that the computer is doing light of work but it is basically not so uh, what is happening here the transaction uh, monitor is doing a lot of work whenever it comes to a network a R rpc call is happening so in a rpc call that is take the input queue and then it is come to the authorization that it is work for him or not so after that it is kind to the application server and this application server is connected with different parts that is the lock manager recovery manager log manager and database and resource manager and after the um, after the processing and with the help of the lock manager recovery manager log manager and data base resource managers it is processing the whole of the data and send it to the output queue and then the output queue is sent to the network that is mean the client so from the left hand side there are a lot of clients is here who is waiting for the result these are sending some rpc call and these rpc calls are processing in the application servers and found the result through the output queue and come to the network again so this is how the process is maintained so uh, if we uh, think that the transactional 
workflow how it is happening is basically uh, why we are doing this because um, if you work for a mail server if you work for a, um, a customer QV management or if you work for a, some purchasing system of inventory model or any uh, POS system so you have to know that how the task is assigned and how it is doing suppose you are going to a restaurant then what is happening here you may uh, give them some menu and then the uh, waiter is taking the order after taking the order it inserted to a system and one slip is generated for the bill and another slip is generated for the kitchen and kitchen is serving the order and give the food to you and then whenever you have finished the food you the bill is come to your point by this time if you add some more item so it is renewing the values and upgrade again so after that whenever you paid so you may have um, some amount back or some um, thing you will pay, get some discounts or these sort of things so these are the process so everything every transactional workflow also have to maintain some process if you have an email server so email is also maintaining the server process and this is a convenient way you have to know that how the transaction models are totally working with so uh, if we uh, see the uh, some example of the workflow of the transaction processing system so electronic mail write uh, uh, routing and electronic mail messages mailers and uh, loan processing form processing if you want to take a loan you have to uh, process a form of a bank and then you have to go for the typical transaction entry so these are the things we are need to uh, know so for a loan processing what is happening here so uh, why these architectures and why these things are important because whenever you want to design a transaction suppose you want to transfer a uh, amount of money from one account to another account suppose you want to uh, doing some online transaction to a um, uh, online transaction to a, any online store suppose like you want to pay uh, some bill to chaldal.com by your bcash account so your bcash account need to be authorized to give the bill to the chaldal account and chaldal account also need to be authorized that he will get the payment so by these two process these are these are the total different servers but they need to be communicate through some process so suppose like a loan process a customer is at first he is applying for a loan officer so he have to fill up some forms to him and then this loan officer is sending it to the verification team that is the customer is information given what is true or false so after that he is get some information here so then it is sent to the superior officer who is assigning the budgeting or something like that that the customer required how many of the loan and after the verification of his resource how much money he will get for the loan so it is informed to the loan officer then if it is been rejected so it is directly sent to the customer that is you are rejected if it is accepted then the loan disbursement system is going on and this system is decided that how many times of period he the customer will get the loan and how many time he will get it is to require or how many times it will get to reback so these are the th system of maintaining the total uh, workflow so suppose a single loan processing system is following this sort of system so if you do have to work in uh, in total different two servers which having uh, involved with the uh, cash flow so you have to follow the each of the status and for the each of the status you have to maintain and monitoring each of the uh, steps so this is how the uh, monitoring process is working on so uh, here um, uh, that is the uh, we must uh, follow the specification of the workflows so detailing the task that must uh, be carried out and defining the execution requirement execution of the workflows that is basically execute the transaction specified in the workflow while also providing the transactional database safeguards related to the correctness of the computation data integrity and durability so uh, this is basically working on the transaction durability and transaction uh, concerns over the workflow of any of the transaction and it might have that uh, deliberately working with the uh, different 
uh, server network and these uh, thing basically the important is the architecture of the transactional monitoring process so this is how it is working so thank you for watching this lecture it is end here